So this last thing that I did, we added this code to start to pull the data out of the database. Basically db.alldocs db that pulls the data out of the database. But it gives it to us in a very user-unfriendly way. Uh, if you check the results in the browser, you see you get back an object. Inside of object, we have various uh, attributes. One of the important ones is rows. So we have object.rows. We have success.rows. That's similar to when we did the social project. We had data.social, data.url. Inside of rows, if you open that, you've got a bunch of objects. The zero with object, the first object. In my case, let's say the third object, that's AMA140. Inside of that is a doc. Well, let's see logically to wrap our minds around this. I want to show the title of the fourth object in my database. The title of the fourth object in my database. So this would have to be success dot rows. This will show all of the all of the rows of data. Then we have to select the the fourth one. So this is going to be related to the 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 square brackets. Let me show you how we're getting deeper into it. Let me show. Let me save it. At, let me run it at this point. You don't have to run it just yet. But now when I have success dot rows and I see the result, now it's starting to show me. Okay, here's your objects. It's not showing like here's all of the raw data. Now it's starting to say here's the individual objects, the eight I may have. So inside of this are, is all of those. Well, digging deep deeper in here. So now with the square brackets. I'm saying, okay, which of the rows? Um, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, so it's going to be the third one, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, yeah, the third one. So show me the third uh, data, the third object. So now it dug down to the third one. It's not all eight. It's not all the raw data, it's the third object. Well, this object, at the top level of the object, so to speak, has the, uh, the properties of doc, id, key, value, and other stuff. So inside of doc, it's got the actual individual fields that I saved originally. So next comes dot doc, and next comes title. So success is like all of the raw data. Rows specifies which of the 12 or 20 or 200 or 2,000 documents I have saved. So we have to specify we, each which one via an index number with square brackets. Inside of that is then an actual document. And then finally, inside of that document is all of the fields we invented, title, underscore ID, dot unique ID, dot year, all of the things that we made up. So now that result is the Amazing Spider-Man. So it's a little longer than what we saw when we did the social, social networks. It's the same idea. Some data at some position to some property. I'm going to comment that out. And have a version of it with, with just simply success. Oh, I think it's better, success.rows. So output the raw data. database output the title 
of the current dock, the fourth one. Because remember, we count from zero. This is the fourth comic in order. Because up here, we said, give me the comics in alphabetical order. So the fourth comic, its title, from all of the data. So the purpose of this function was just to prepare ourselves. So let's extract the data, and then further we will actually then show the data on screen like in a table, in that div that's been waiting for us. So we're going to pass this data on to another function. We've seen in the console what it's going to look like. Function show comics table success.rows that function doesn't exist yet we're going to write it in a moment this is okay take this raw data that you pulled out the actual rows of data number 0 through 99 whatever pass that data into a brand new function and that function will then display the title, the year, etc. in a table, or any way we would want. Outside of the function prep new line, and we will create function show table show comics table. And this will look familiar here, data. We're defining a function that accepts a parameter and up there we said, okay, let's uh, pass the rows of data into the function. So now we can use data as the shorthand. Instead of having to write success dot rows, etc., we'll be able to write data dot etc. That's our shorthand. And function show comics table data. We'll do the same sort of thing, so this should be familiar, like when we showed the, um, the random uh, social networks in the other class. We're going to build a string piece by piece out of the data from the database and then display it on screen. So inside of this function, we'll create a variable, we'll call it str, that's going to be our string, and that's going to equal to some HTML. Again, we're going to create a, a table. So this is that fun thing that we, remember that we made this paragraph, we made the table, we opened and closed, a lot of pluses, a lot of quotes, a lot of double quotes, that fun thing. We're going to do that again to display this data, but not all the data. We're only going to display like three pieces of the important data, the name of the comic, the year, and the number. Then, the, then we'll have a button to show you more of the data. I don't, have to do, I don't want to display all the data at once. I want like a more button to show me the more, to show me what was the comment, what was the publisher uh, later on when we integrate this into Visual Studio if we take a photo of the comic and the barcode. More data. This is going to be a paragraph inside of the div which is going to house a table. We can style it really nice, but for the moment, we will add the border attribute. Single quotes there, border one. Remember this whole thing about single and double quotes and why you do it? Well, you use the single quotes so that you don't break your double quotes that wrap around the whole string. 
Now we're going to have a table here with one pixel simple border, which we could style a lot better with CSS. I'm going to do something here. Let's break the table to its own line, which breaks the string. So end the string on that first line. And we need to start the string again for readability. It's going to be really hard to work with this thing if we keep it on one line like we tried to do for the other time. This is the beginning and this is the end of a sandwich that is going to have a lot of stuff in between. It's going to have building the table row by row. And we had it on one line, but we are quickly going to need to do something like this so that it makes sense to us. The computer will process it, but if we can't understand what we wrote, the computer won't be able to process it that well. Make sure that's a plus equals. We started the string, we continued the string, plus equals. Table starts, table ends. Yes? We only have a div at the moment. We're eventually going to stick this in the div that's back on the HTML block. Um, the div has inherent built-in styling. So does the P. So with that extra p tag, we will make sure that we separate this table from other elements so that they're not so bun bunched up against each other. And with another p as a sort of like an anchor, we can use CSS to further style it in interesting ways. Back in between, This is optional, but I'm going to tab this one in just so that it kind of makes sense that I'm, you know, between the two table tags. Here we're going to start our first row, tr. The first row is going to compose our heading, is going to be composed of our headings, our column headings. Inside of that, we have a th. The first column will be uh, name. The first column in this table will be name, th. It's a table heading, the first column. Yes? T, which one? T head, I think, has a slightly different purpose. That's a good point. I usually so I don't think you use T head for this. Maybe. Maybe it's a variation. <coughs> I know this one works. T head might work, but I think it works for something slightly different. I have to look it up to confirm. Uh, we're going to display the name. We're going to display the number. So we'll just put the number symbol, the number of the comic. One more table head. Info. We'll have three columns. The name of the comic, the number of the comic, and then info. We will display the year of the comic, the comments of the comic, the publisher of the comment, and anything else in a separate screen. There will be a button under the column of info. Save it and run it. We still have more to do, but save it and run it, and we should get a table starting to form underneath our form. One more thing. Yes, uh, we need to display it on screen. Okay, next line. We're starting to build a table. We need to display it on screen. So we have that. We have that div. Let's see where 
would we call it? Um, LDiv show comics table. So dollar LDiv show comics table dot uh, HTML string. We're building a string, the start of the table, the end of the table. We're building the first row. So we've got that all saved in string. Make sure these are plus equals after the first one. We've got a div on screen. Let's write some HTML into it. The string. The table we're, we're building so far. Now if you save it and run it, you should get the start of a table appearing on screen. Let's see, so if I run this, it's simply name, number, info, and eventually these eight objects that I've stored will show up here. So show prep comics is first, then outside of show prep comics, show table, and then run show comics. So again, going back to what we did with that social networks practice, we need to iterate. We need to go through each object in this stream of data and display that data row by row. So after that string, we need to do a for loop so that we go line by line. For var of i equal to zero, so start with the zero width item in our stream of data as long as i is less than data dot length and then increment i one at a time so uh, we're going to loop several times several times based on how many items we have in the database length start from the zero with one keep going Add one to keep looping and looping until we get to the end of our data. What happens inside of the for value? I mean the for statement. We're going to add more to the string. This one right here? Mm -hmm. huh, let's see. It knows that it's a less than and not an actual HTML command because it's not in quotes. Every other instance of that is in quotes. We have the less than symbol here in quotes. And that quote ends right there. So then it goes back to regular old JavaScript. This is regular old JavaScript. Then we get another string that starts. So then these are processed as angle brackets. Um, this, because it's not in a string, will be processed as JavaScript. This is going to process it, create something, put it into the string, and then it will be rendered as HTML. So it doesn't render it as HTML until after it processes it. So it's safely, it's safely JavaScript and not HTML. Here we're going to build another row. We're going to build it first uh, as a string, and then we have to do the same way we 
end the quote, start the quote, end the quote, plus symbol, all of that. So we're going to write it completely first. I'm going to write it wrong, that is in a string first. Okay, so this is going to have a plain old TD table data. This table data is going to line up with the name of the comic. That's data. Square brackets i dot doc dot underscore id. Oh, wait a minute, not, not id, title. So the title of the comic in the database is, is doc title. In this particular doc, you need a title starting with zero, because we're saying start with zero. So zero goes in here. Show me the zero with title. This, of course, will not process properly because it's all a string. We will have to do the close quote, open quote, all of that stuff in a moment. Let's write it first so that it makes sense. Then we have another TD. This one lines up with the number of the comic. So in this case also, data i doc number. in the TD. Sorry about that. In the TD. So table data, column of the title, table data, column of the number, show me the number there, and then we'll make another TD so that it lines up with the column of info. data for the title, for the number, and now this is going to be my column where I'm going to have the button for more info, for show more, or whatever. So we, we will actually be able to do an icon, not as elegantly as, um, as jQuery Mobile, but we will be able to create a, a button here by using a hexadecimal code, so uh, ampersand, pound sign, X, 1, capital F, 4, capital A, capital C, semicolon. That'll create like a little speech bubble. This is a character entity I had to look up, so capitals do matter. Ampersand, pound sign, X, lowercase, number 1, capital F, 4, A, capital, and C. <coughs> I'm missing actually a digit, hold on. That should be hexadecimal, I think. And there is a semicolon, yes. No, it's not hexadecimal, so that's correct. That's the number of digits. And then a semicolon there, because then this will create a symbol of a little speech bubble, like for more info. So, yes. This will create a button, but it won't actually behave like a button. It won't be clickable. So we will need to write the A tag around that. href, single quotes, just put x, x for, some, for, for the moment. Because it's going to create a button. That code will create a button, a visual button, but it won't be clickable. So we'll use the usual A tag to set this up to, to actually go somewhere. I think actually we're safe to put a pound sign there. Okay. 
place. So just to pause conceptually, we're doing a lot of advanced stuff here. We have this loop that eventually we want it to do is to create line by line as long as we have data to look at line by line x number of times create a row to display the title to display the number of the comic to display an icon to read more and we'll be link well this will just display the data once it's fully set up I want to be able to click the button to display the data of this particular one I clicked on. Right now I'm only pulling from the database and displaying the title and the number. I want to be able to click that icon so that it then displays also on another screen, a little pop-up, the, the year plus the comment, publish, plus the publisher, etc. So the underscore ID is what lets us extract a unique item from the database. We'll have to do db.get for this one comic I clicked on. db.alldocs uh, gives me everything, but I'm going to want to grab one item. So we're going to add a property to the row, the tr, uh, right here, tr. We're going to add an attribute, that is. We're going to add an attribute to the whole row. The whole row is going to be defined with a data dash id, single quotes. We use data dash role page to define that the whole thing is a page. Data dash role equals button to define that the thing is a button data dash anyone can make these up this is a built-in thing to HTML5 it's just that the jQuery mobile team reserved data dash role um, what other ones are there data dash uh, oh data dash transition all of those so those jQuery mobile team kinda said we're gonna use those data dash transition data dash role we're gonna make up data dash ID I don't know if some other project uses data ID. Maybe we're stepping on their toes. I don't know. But we're only going to use jQuery and jQuery mobile, so I think we're safe. So data dash ID is going to be something that we make up that is a unique identifier for this row of data. Data I doc dot underscore ID. So the unique ID of this particular data is going to be shown here. Data dash ID equals AMA1 or SUP99, whatever the ID is. That's why, again, I want a short name there. So data dash ID equals AMA1, and that's going to define this whole row for Amazing Spider Man number one. We need that for further along when we want to click the Read More button for it to display all the data of this one comic. Let's add a comment. This is going to be multi-line. Create a row with a data ID of the underscore ID of the comic. Display in a head in a in a cell the title and number of the comic. Also, display a, display a read more icon just a moment here. Let me grab this. So this will be a read more icon which has an active link. So that's what that string is doing. Now it's a string, it's not actually processing, but I want to write it all completely 
and then kind of get the concept of what's happening, because then we have to do all of that magic of opening and closing and plus symbol concatenation and all of that, which then it gets complex. This is, this is the easy part. The complex part is closing the quotes, opening the quotes, plus symbol, all of that in the right place. And we're making up data-id, and we're going to populate it with the particular ID of this particular comic, because we're reusing i as the way that identifies the particular row from the raw stream of data. don't believe we're going to get anything meaningful in the web browser. Oh, we get something interesting. Okay, we could run that just to see what happens. It's not complete, but we're getting there. So in my case, I get eight instances of some comic to display with a little speech bubble there, active links. These will be, dis these will be rendered dynamically in a moment, title and number. So in my case, it did it eight times because data.length, I have eight items in the database. It jumped through that for loop eight times. It made eight rows. So the very first string, it created the name, the number, and the info row. It closed the table. And then in between the sandwich, right, you can think about that's the start and that's the end of the sandwich. In AB2, you've got the lettuce and tomatoes, the avocado, the mustard, the Tabasco sauce, all the good stuff. All of these instances where we've got data i, all of those will need to be taken out of the string. The string needs to end. Then the string needs to continue. So it's a really long line, but hopefully you can see it because then we're, we're about to break it up into multiple lines in a moment. All right, so here's how I'll start. Um, I need to display underscore ID. I need to process it. So I need to close the quote, the double quote, right there. Oops. Uh, I'm going to put it right there. Double, double quote. Space plus space. <coughs> After that, plus space quote. And you will then break that to the next line. So this was all one long string. Now I start the string, I end the string, so that I can start to process, it, process this. There's my single quote. Okay, plus add to the string, processing whatever is in, is in the ID field, plus continue. So the string starts again, which ends. <coughs> The single quote, the single quote of the ID, process that. And I need to go and close this, that string right there, plus title, plus the rest of the string. Uh, so right here, ending double quote, space, plus, space, plus, Quote. Next line, we get this kind of like floating fragment here. Uh, new cell plus process, give me what's in the title of that row. Continue, open quote so that the rest of the string continues up until that point. Because then I need to have it process the number. 
quotes space plus space plus quote. Same thing again. Fragment here, slash td, close the start of that td, which display the title. Start another cell, display the number, continue the string, close the cell, start another cell. Uh, and all of this could be fine as is. We don't need to play with that string anymore. Spacing doesn't matter, so you can line it up like that if you want. Or if you're really obsessive, you can line it up like this. So as long as you know where your quotes end, that's valid. It looks weird, but the pluses line up there, that's nice. Um, so this is just visually completely optional. It should be changing between the colors of comments and regular code. Comments in my case are gray. Confirm that your opening and closing quotes look like mine. Let me check if my code works over here. So a moment ago I just had string data, and now if I run it, I have the data of the comics. X files alphabetically. Negative two, using Spider-Man number one. What well, was that from 1963, 1991? I don't know. Well, we'll see it when we get to more info in a moment. We start to display the data. I save um, Superman number 99 from like 19. I'll be from, uh, I don't know, 1950. Save that. Refresh it. So I get a brand new Superman number 99. Pass the number ones. Pause there. If it worked, great. If it's not, let's take a look at your code. But this is this should be very reminiscent of what we did with the social networks. We've got this raw data, data that we are then display that we're then creating a simple table, row by row, a for loop which actually jumps through each instance of data in the table, opening and closing HTML which is eventually processed in the div that string. Anyone need a little help with that? So think about how if you use these apps, Facebook, Instagram, all those fun apps, think about how you click a button and it just does it. It displays everything nice. Someone had to figure out how to display it on screen, how to indent it, what does it look like when you do this or when you do that or when you add or remove data. You know, someone had to figure all of this out. And it, it's us. If we're making our app, we have to figure all of that out. This is conceptually basic HTML, basic JavaScript. We're coupling it with a database and pulling data out of the database, but we're still just displaying valid HTML to build a table.
This data ID is going to be very important in just a moment because we want to make that info button work. I want to click on that info button so that it displays detailed data of this comic. I'm only displaying the title and the number at the moment. I want to display the other fields. So last call, I'm about to move on. Anyone need a little help? I think there.
Just a quick reminder, did everyone sign in? We've only got 16 signed in. Anyone miss the sign-in sheets? Thank you. 